an atheist, I was, I was occupied, put it that way. I won't say consumed, but I was definitely occupied with the notion of objective truth. In other words, I believed that I could find a way to know absolute truth by exercising certain rules. And there's philosophers down throughout the ages that have taught this in different ways. One of the most recent ones was Ayn Rand, and she actually had a, a philosophical system she taught. It was called objectivism, and it was a good tool for figuring things out. But there's a flaw in it, and the flaw is in with just about everything is us. And more specifically, it was me, because the thing I wasn't allowing for was the fact that I am naturally a subjective person. In other words, I can only determine what is truth according to my own opinion, for lack of a better way of putting it, because we all are individuals. Some people, when they, say, they see an event, they witness something, some people are focused more on the visual, others would be more focused on the audio, some might even be more focused on the smell than all of that. Or some other thing that comes, or some, some specific words they heard, or something that they thought in response to it, and that might dominate their whole experience. So, you can take a bunch of witnesses, good witnesses, to the same event, and get as many different accounts of that event as there are witnesses, because we're all these individual people. Now, I believe there is justice, there is... There is proof that there is justice in the way that the universe is designed, in the way that everything functions and works. And the most dysfunctional thing is us, because we're the only things in this creation that can choose not to go along with the program, so to speak. We can rebel. Everything else operates off of instinct or the laws of nature. Inanimate things are just what they are. Inanimate animals are working off of pretty much instinct. So they, they function more or less as they are designed. So here we are. We have all these, these variant views on things. That's why you, in the religious world you'll have literally thousands of different systems that claim they are the way. They are the truth. And that can be daunting, and I understand that. So, in the context of there being a just world that we live in, and a just creator who created that, there must be a way to get through all that, to figure out what the truth actually is. And, to put it simply, it is to get to know that one. So, how do you do that? Well, first you got to acknowledge that you do have this broken nature, this fallen nature, that you don't see things totally objectively. And, and through looking at that, I can only tell you what happened to me, it created in me a desire to want to know actual truth. Not just what I determined, or some philosopher, or author, or whoever determined was the truth. I wanted to know. I really wanted to know. And this is where I decided to believe something that the Bible said. The Bible said of God, or that is God said to us about Himself and our connection with Him, He said that, You shall seek Me and find Me when you search for Me with all your heart. Now God is the truth. He is the source of all truth. So to seek for the truth is to seek God. To seek God is to seek truth. That is one and the same thing. So it all comes down to your sincerity. Not that your sincerity creates truth or anything like that, and your pureness. It's just that God responds to that, that desire. And He shows you things. He shows you who He is. He shows you His truth. And there's a scripture I want to read. Two scriptures from John chapter 8, verses 32 and 36. And you can swap these out. To more or less illustrate that point. Jesus says in 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. 
And in 36 he says, Therefore if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Well, he also said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is life itself. So he is the way to himself. He is the truth of himself. So you could just as easily say in 32, And you shall know the Son, and the Son shall make you free. In 36, Therefore, if the truth makes you free, you shall be free indeed. It's interchangeable because it has to do with what do you really want to know? Do you want to get confirmation of something you already believe? Whether it's your own philosophy, life, world view, or whatever that is, or your religion, or what you've been taught, or your denomination? Or do you really want to know the truth at the expense of all of that stuff? No matter what it means, no matter what you've been invested in, how much you invested in it, even if you lose it, you want to know Him. You want to know the person of the truth Himself. If you can establish that in your heart, I believe you will find the truth. Because that's what we found, my wife and I. We have found the truth, the source of the truth. We don't know all truth. We don't know all knowledge. We know the one who does. And so that's why we don't fret, or at least... I can't, I won't speak for her. I sense a peace in her that she has, that she didn't have before. And for myself, I know that things that used to cause me anxiety, things I used to try to ignore or bury, put under the rug, like the future and what might be, and all these unknowns, it doesn't trouble me. Not because I know everything about that, but because I know the truth. I know the person of the truth. And I know that trusting in myself isn't going to provide any of that peace. Or trusting into someone else. That's just extending it. It's the same thing as trusting myself. I'm just choosing to trust someone else. Another broken, subjective person who takes all the input and translates it the best they can. But does it wrong, like we all do. So God is there. He is there forever, as He always has been. Willing and able to respond to anyone who wants something beyond their own feel or idea or opinion of what their senses and their mind can tell them what reality is. When you really seek that, He will respond. So I just want to encourage you to do that. If you seek the truth, even if you don't even necessarily understand or even believe that the truth is a person, if you seek the truth with all your heart, I believe that you will find Him. He will respond to you. But you got to have that as, as your only goal. As that's what you want. You want the truth. And be real. Be honest. Not as though you can just instantly shed all your prejudices. I'm not saying that. You can't do that. I can't do that. None of us can do that. Just be real about them. I have these prejudices. I have these preconceived notions. I do. All of us do. But... In my heart, I still want the truth. So it's a matter of values. I place that, the, the truth, as a higher value in my mind and in my heart above anything else. And it's led to all kinds of things. It's led to us learning all kinds of things. Not that people necessarily receive it, but that's not what it's about. If it was about that, we would be saying a lot of different things. We'd be saying a lot of things that other people say. So, again, we encourage you to do that. You can know the truth. This is a just world. It was made by a just creator. I'm not saying everything that happens in the world is just. I'm saying that there's justice available for all because he desires that for us. The things that he desires, they're good things. They're the things of, of goodness and love and truth and all of that. And when you desire the same thing, as broken and messed up as you are, you're going to find it because the source is going to reveal it to you. In Jesus' name, amen.